Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast. We just talked about the NFL rookies from the NFC. Now we're going to look on the other side of the league and break down the top AFC performers out of rookies. Starting off the bat here, Joe Alt of the LA Chargers. I thought that he looked very good in this game, all things considered. He wasn't perfect necessarily. Definitely has to be better in the run game, but... All things considered, you know, offensive, uh, playing that right tackle spot, he was matched up against a couple big-time defensive presences in Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins, and he held his own, didn't allow any pressures. I think that that's probably, obviously, Jim Harbaugh is going to want to establish the run game more, so maybe he internally feels a little bit differently, but I also think, you know, One of the biggest things for the Chargers right now is just being able to let Justin Herbert shine, give him as much time as possible in his dropbacks, and Joe Alt definitely did that in this game, so I am giving him a B plus because, again, tough defense that he faced in Las Vegas this past week. J.C. Latham, another offensive tackle, faced the Chicago Bears this past week. And Latham is maybe a little bit of a project player for Tennessee. You can see the athleticism, the strength with him, and he was able to move guys around on the line of scrimmage. The issue is, in the passing game, he was a lot weaker in this game, where ultimately he allowed five pressures and a sack throughout this game against Chicago. It's not like Will Levis was ever really comfortable, and Latham playing that left tackle position, obviously a little bit of a heightened importance of being a bigger part of that passing game. So definitely not all bad for him, but a lot of room to grow as well. Ultimately, I'm giving him a C plus for his performance against Chicago. Bo Nix. Bo Nix, who was, you know, a little bit of a darling based off of how he played in preseason. He got a little bit of a wake-up call for this past week against the Seahawks. Ultimately, he just never looked comfortable in this game through a couple interceptions, one of which in the red zone. You can't take points off of the board like that if you are Bo Nix. And I think that, you know, he has a lot of room to grow, of course. And Sean Payton should be able to coach him up that he seems entirely confident in Nix to be able to sort of fulfill his vision. We will see about that. Ultimately, I think that Nix, he is supposed to be one of the more NFL-ready quarterbacks based off of the amount of game reps he got throughout college, one of the longest-tenured college quarterbacks in the history of the sport that it was maybe a little bit disappointing seeing him play the way that he did against Seattle. I have him with a C-. minus. You could definitely make a case that it was worse than that. But ultimately, you know, it's it's also against a good Seattle defense and against Mike McDonald, his new core, a lot of young pieces there, a good secondary. So I'm giving him maybe a little bit of the benefit of the doubt, and I'm going with a C-. Brock Bowers was pretty great in this game for the Raiders. It's not like he was asked to do a ton necessarily, but just the receiving threat that he is is very prominent. Ultimately, had a handful of catches. Uh, I'm going to pull up the stats exactly here because I don't have them offhand, but I thought that Bowers did a really good job. He's going to split a lot of the volume of his targets considering the fact that he's playing with Devontae Adams. He's also, from a tight end perspective alone, also splitting snaps with Michael Mayer, but I do think that this Raiders offense can provide a lot of different looks. Bowers is going to be very versatile on this group. Six catches, 58 yards on eight on eight targets. I think that we're only going to continue to see him get better. A- minus is maybe a little bit high for him, but it might be a little bit of personal bias from myself as well because I am definitely a fan of his. Liatu Latu, defensive end for the Indianapolis Colts. It was a pretty disappointing debut for him, and I am somebody who is definitely a believer in Latu in the long run, but didn't get a ton of snaps to start either. He ended up, 
you know, being a little bit more limited in his opportunities. It was very clear that they're using him at least out of the gates as more of a situational pass rusher than a true every down guy, which, you know, it's a good Colts defense. So it's not like he is being buried on a bad defense, but would definitely like to see more from him. Just played 39% of the snaps for Indianapolis in week one and didn't really didn't record any stats in the box score. I thought there were, there were a number of instances where he was able to get some drive on some pass rushes, but the biggest thing for him, I think moving forward, is going to be creating separation at the point of attack that, you know, you can move a player on you can move an offensive tackle on a pass rush but ultimately their goal is just to keep you in front of them and that's where Latu he seemed to struggle actually breaking away and there were some times where he was in the space of CJ Stroud but ultimately never able to fully impact the play there was the first play that he had that at least that I noticed him was that third and long on the first Houston drive and ultimately he made some momentum of driving into the backfield a little bit but Stroud scrambled away he ends up getting knocked over hitting the turf and that was kind of the closest that he got to actually sacking Stroud for the entire game so Latu not somebody I'm out on but Maybe my expectations were a little bit too high in terms of what type of day one impact he could have for this Colts defense that, again, has a lot of, you know, a lot of talent overall. So we'll see, again, clearly the fact that they do not seem to trust him in the run game is something to keep an eye on as well, was not, was not in for any of the red zone possessions for the Colts either. Chop Robinson of the Miami Dolphins. This is somebody that was also seen as a little bit more of a raw prospect coming into the NFL. You see the athleticism and he, you know, even showed moments of that quick twitch that does make him such a promising player, but ultimately didn't end up getting in the stat sheet, did commit an offsides penalty as well. Now, very limited stats snaps as a whole for him only 16 snaps on defense so not a great gauge of ultimately who he's going to be as a player and again I think it's going to take him a little bit longer to fully develop anyways but there will be an opening for him considering the fact that the Dolphins did lose a few starters from last year's defense and hopefully because again Chop Robinson could be a lot of fun to watch play football if he does hit that ceiling that so many people are hoping from him. Brian Thomas Jr. of the Jacksonville Jagu Jaguars, somebody that I thought was flying a little bit under the radar during the draft. Yes, Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. were you know, more blue chip prospects than Brian Thomas Jr., but I see wide receiver one potential with him, and he already made, you know, his fair share of an impact on week one ended up scoring a touchdown at the back of the end zone on a beautiful throw from Trevor Lawrence. So I think that he can definitely continue to carve out a bigger role for himself moving forward. And, you know, just four catches in this game, but someone that, again, I am, you know, admitting maybe I'm a little bit biased because I am a fan of his, but I think that he is going to be able to again, sort of emerge even more so in this Jaguars offense. I have him with a B-plus in this game. Xavier Worthy, giving a B-plus to him as well. It was really only, I mean, it was more plays than I suppose Brian Thomas in terms of the explosiveness and the real impact being felt. Worthy only really had the three touches, but he made the most of them scoring two touchdowns and, you know, two of them being these explosive plays on the reverse end around and just streaking wide open down on that broken coverage down the right sideline to catch a touchdown as well. So he's somebody that I think is going to be, his impact will be a little bit hit or miss in terms of how he is able to produce for them. Or I should really more so say production could be hit or miss than the impact because I do think that opposing teams are going to start preparing for Xavier Worthy. You know, the more and more his film is put out there, 
while he's in Kansas City, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes are going to have a blast utilizing him. And ultimately, again, he might not get tons of looks necessarily on a game-to-game basis, but he is going to scare opposing defenses of, you know, not not being able, like they were last year, to play so far up their secondary where, you know, there really wasn't much of a threat of an explosive offense of offensive performance from the Chiefs last year. This year, I think it's going to be different in large part due to Worthy. Nate Wiggins, cornerback for the Baltimore Ravens, ultimately didn't get a huge snap share in this game. And that's why it's kind of hard to ultimately evaluate what he was able to give the Ravens in this one. But he was overall pretty solid, somebody that could definitely take on a bigger role for this Ravens defense as time moves on here. He played in just 17 snaps for the Ravens during their Thursday night football game last week. So, But he looked solid when he was in at least. So I'm giving him a B-, and I think that there is a lot of room to grow for him as a player and just his overall role in this Ravens offense. And then the last one of the, oh, and that's that's actually it. So, you know, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section on these first round rookies and who you were most impressed by. And additionally, go outside of just the first round range as well. Um, if there was anybody else that really stood out to you. But we are now going to be taking our next break here, and when we come back on the other side, I'm going to be giving my tier list for the NFL, all 32 NFL teams headed into Week 2. So stick with us. We will be right back after this quick break. <laughs> 